This teacher is really annoying. Oi! A fine throw with a beautiful arc. Projectiles are fascinating things, but the maths that drives them and the ways in which we can abuse it are arguably just as interesting. Ah, it's recess. Let's go outside. This is a cannon that never misses its target, no matter where you put it. You can do this because it is harnessing some very powerful mathematical formulas. Formulas that consider every factor that affects the ball, so the height, the distance, and its gravity are all taken into account perfectly, even when it's severely skewed by wind. So, how is this achieved? Well, imagine an explosion went off at the cannon, and expands at the speed of the projectiles it fires. The instant it reaches its target, we can see the line this creates to the center would be the exact angle the cannon would need to shoot at. Obviously, this does not take gravity into account, but let's pretend for a moment that the explosion is pulled down by gravity as it expands. The explosion once again reaches the target, but this time it forms a different angle. It even manages to strike the target twice. If we take the second line and use it as a firing angle for our cannon, we can once again produce the perfect shot. The first line will also produce a perfect shot, but it will be very flat, and the hoop may interfere. This concept boils down to an equation. The left side represents our projectile's position through time, while the right side represents our explosion as it grows in size. Since position, velocity, and acceleration are vectors, we need to rearrange the equation a bit to account for the three axes. Finally, we can expand this entire thing out to yield this. This is horrible to look at, but it's actually not that bad. We know every variable here besides t, so we can simply let the computer calculate the other numbers for us. And once we have it in this form, we can simply solve for time and learn all the angles we can shoot at. Listen, I love basketball, but we're only just scratching the surface of what this is capable of. Let's step it up a bit. Come on, you lily-livered cockroaches! Raise those sails! We head for Tartuga by nightfall! And someone get me some more room! This is Captain Blubber, and he's in a bit of a pickle. The Empire's fastest ship is on his tail, and it's loaded with enough cannons to level this crew entirely. What if we shot their cannonballs before they can hit us? Ah, fuck it. Our problem has become considerably more complicated. The targets we are aiming at now have their own velocity and gravity, so aiming at their exact position like before is futile. Let's make use of the explosion metaphor again and see what's going on. As our gravity-induced explosion expands, it strikes the red ball there. If we fire the blue ball at this spot, we notice that the red ball meets it at this location at the exact same time. At this point you might be wondering, why? Why does this keep working? What's so special about this explosion? Well, our explosion isn't really an explosion. What it actually represents is all the possible shots our cannon can take, all fired at once. So if targets do strike the explosion, we know the shot is possible, along with the exact location to aim at. This technique has a wide use in video games, where enemies can be made more threatening by hitting moving targets, or AI can be made smarter by being able to avoid an oncoming collision. And as Captain Blubber is about to discover, includes defending yourself from an incoming cannon barrage. Fire! By utilising the projectile prediction technique, we have successfully created a shield out of cannon fire. Truly a marvel in 16th century engineering. Remember the equation we used to aim at a static target? Well, the equation to hit a moving target is exactly the same. Despite the differing nature of these two situations, the equation reads identical. The numbers we feed in may differ, but not the properties. For our basketball hoop, the relative velocity is zero because our target is always stationary. For our two cannons, the relative acceleration is zero because the projectile we are intercepting it with has the same gravity. When two projectiles have the same gravity, it doesn't matter whether they are on Earth or in space. The angle we fire at will always be the same. We never deal with absolutes here, we are only interested in how our target moves from the shooter's point of view. Captain Blubber has successfully defended his ship from the Empire. Infuriated, they now try a slightly different approach. Despite the wall of cannon fire heading towards the ship, not a single ball makes it through and with the Empire exhausting the last of its cannonballs, Captain Blubber emerges unharmed, and lives on to pillage and plunder another day. We are the kangaroo overlords, surrender now you bastards! Several light years away from Earth, 
A giant spaceship of alien kangaroos is attacking familiar allies. <laughs> Unlike our previous foes, these kangaroos have very advanced technology. Their space-bending projectiles utilise the effect known as jerk, or in other words, change in acceleration. This effect allows their projectiles to travel along highly unpredictable paths, which is bad news for our fish, who only have a one cannon to defend themselves. Let's help them out a bit. The model we use for our basketballs and cannonballs will not work here due to the presence of jerk. To account for this, we add this term. I'll save you the pain of expanding this one out. All you need to know is that the final form of the problem will look something like this. The presence of the two terms at the start presents us with a new issue. We are dealing with a 6 degree polynomial, which essentially means it has 6 unique solutions. You've likely seen polynomials before in the form of quadratics, which are 2nd degree polynomials. Remember this formula? We can use it to solve quadratics. Similar formulas exist for polynomials of the 3rd and 4th degree, each hideously longer than the previous one. For polynomials of the 5th degree and beyond, there are no general formulas, which means there's no way to extract all the values we need. So what does this mean for our aimbot? Let's dive a bit deeper. We know the equation for our boomerang aimbot has up to 6 solutions, which you can see here as the boomerang strikes our explosion 6 times. This means there are 6 shots we can take that will hit the target. Here is a graph of how close our best shot gets to the boomerang over time. You can see that the points we want to find strike the x-axis, where the distance is 0. So the main question now is, how do we find these points? Well, because this line is a 6th degree polynomial, there is no way to find the exact values to this. This is disappointing. That is, was until I realised this. Here's the derivative of our graph, which creates its own line. If we find the points where this one strikes the x-axis, we can see that they coincide with the peaks and valleys of the original line. Interestingly, our original points have been encapsulated by these peaks and valleys. We can now perform binary search, or in the context of mathematics, the bisection method, which allows us to reduce the space we know the solution sits in until we are happy with the precision. Awesome! We can now solve polynomials in this manner. Just one more problem. To do that, we need to solve the derivative as well. So how is this done? Just do the same thing again. Each time we take the derivative, the resulting line loses a bit of its complexity, until eventually, we are left with a straight line, which is trivial to solve. So for any polynomial, all we need to do is recursively reduce the problem to a line, and once that happens, work our way back up the chain. With this final piece of the puzzle, we can now perfectly predict space boomerang flights. Alright, I think that's enough maths talk. Let's get back to our fish.